Welcome to the Successful Man Podcast. This is episode six, and officially we should be on episode eight, I believe, or episode nine. I'm sorry for the delay. February snuck by me real quick. Stayed pretty busy. We got snowed in down here in Arkansas. You'd think that'd be a great time for me to do a podcast, but stayed pretty busy during this month and had just had some several things pop up that were priority for me, but been doing a lot of studying and preparing for this episode. This is really a continuation of of the last one dealing with training. As I shared last time, we went into the the thoughts of of training our children. You know, the Bible using lots of of scripture, uh, with the the main focus being that scripture that says, train up a child in the way that he should go. So What really came to my mind was going back to, in my opinion, the there's no greater organization that deals with training than the United States military. There's a huge focus on training. We can take uh, men, men and women from off the streets all across the United States, put them put them together in a unit and give them a skill set. Within a, in a short amount of period, make them uh, capable fighters, capable carrying out whatever mission they're tasked to do. So I think that's pretty awesome to think about, uh, to go from nothing to a well-oiled machine. So there is something to learn, I think, from the military when it comes to training. So today, what I want to do is take a look at a doctrine document by the United States Army that deals with training. And this is ADP 7 TAC 0. We're going to go through uh, several chapters here and spend some time uh, spend some time reading. And as we go through this document, I want us to be thinking about our children and how we're supposed to be training them. Obviously, we're not training fighters. We're not training warriors in the sense of going to fight for our country. But the concepts, the the strategies that I think the Army calls out in this document are some neat things that you can maybe grab a hold of to use in your life and to think through as you approach how to train your children in the way they should go. The whole point is we don't want to be haphazard in how we train our kids and, and we don't want to let time just slip by us and before you know it, they're grown and out of the house and while we have... You know, they've learned from us just by being around us and watching us. I really want to challenge you to take a proactive approach in how you train your kids. Take a very proactive approach as a parent in how you work with them to navigate life. Because life is challenging. Life is difficult. And to me, the mission is to prepare them for I'll just call it the battle, right? The battle of life. I want to make them a capable warrior in the sense of being able to stand strong in the face of difficulties because they will come. Difficult times will come. Hard times will come. Challenges will come. And and we want children that when they're young, even as a young person, can stand strong in the midst of a of people around them that are struggling at times. And being able to cope, being able to deal with things is is super important. So training kids in the way they should go, helping them to be strong citizens, to be strong people in life is important. And so I want us to look at this document and kind of think about I'll make some comments as I read here to help us kind of steer this towards our... uh, our thought process in raising our kids. The introduction here says this. It says this Army publication describes the fundamentals of how the Army trains to conduct operations as a unified action partner employing the Army's operational concept, unified land operations. Developing and sustaining readiness is the Army's number one priority. Training represents the most important activity Units do every day to achieve readiness. So think about that. They're saying that readiness is our number one priority. 
And the way we get ready is through training. It is the most important activity. What does it mean to be ready from a military perspective? We could spend a whole lesson on that. I'll try to break it down real simple. Much of uh, what goes into readiness is actually on a classified level. Uh, you won't really find that open source wise, but the the essence of it is that every well the the Air Force as a whole, and then uh, units as a whole, all the way from ma major commands on down to individual units, they have specific mission sets that they are responsible for. You know, for example, the F sixteen CJ is meant to, uh, it's, it's on a seek and destroy mission, if you will, for, uh, SAM sites. You know, it's an anti-aircraft, anti, um, aircraft detector. Um, you know, the wild weasel has a unique mission and, and the list goes on. Army units have a land fighting, uh, mission, obviously special operations, special operations have multiple missions they're responsible for, but what the military does is they take whatever mission set you're responsible for, they've, they identify what's called a MET, a mission essential task. And you may have uh, several to hundreds, depending on the size of the organization, what's called METs, mission essential tasks. And these METs are consistently graded by commanders, and it's all based on your the health of your personnel, the training status of your personnel. And really what it does is just shows leaders at a higher level how ready that unit is as far as needing to carry out that mission. So at any moment I could get a snapshot across the entire force of it, whether or not my unit is ready. A lot of time has gone into that. It's a very interesting concept to think about. And in fact, commanders... Their, their rank, their career really rides on keeping their units ready. If you fail to keep your unit ready uh, for the mission, you will, you will, that's the quickest way to be fired as a commander for sure. Uh, so readiness and the training that goes with it is, is so critical because you have to, you got to be able to show that number one, we're, we're green and ready to go for this particular task or if I'm in the yellow or if I'm, if I'm in the red, what's the no kidding reason? Uh, if I'm not getting the support I need from upper leadership, if it's an equipment issue, a personnel issue, a training issue, and then I better be having a, a good explanation or a good plan of when I'm going to get from red to yellow and green or, or yellow to green. So again, it's just the, the mission, mission essential tasks. And, and you know we could we could really apply that to, uh, to to our kids, right? What is what is their mission? What's the mission of your son or your daughter? You know, it's to it's to be a a a, a stable, strong, respectable, honorable citizen in this country that contributes to society. And obviously, if you're a Christian, you know that has a strong faith. And if you spent some time, it'd be fun to just do this on a whiteboard, I think, to really break it down. What are the essential tasks that they need to do to do that, right? They need to be honest. They need to be, uh, they need to be able to handle stress, stressful situations, handle pressure. You know, we could just ramble off a list of things that they, they should be able to do. You know, a lot of this, a lot of these things, they just watch their parents, right? Or they just watch people, but, taking time to think through what are those essential tasks or those essential things that they need to be able to do to be successful as uh, young adults, as parents, as, as employees, as they get older, it's something worth thinking about. We're not going to, I'm not going to go in that today because I think each parent needs to really define that themselves. You know, you need to think about your kids, what's important to you. Which is pretty interesting because in the military, you know, not every commander has the same task. Not every commander, not every unit has the same uh, METs or and even the same mission. So it goes it goes the same with parents. But 
Um, again, the army is saying, Hey, the number one way we get ready is by training. We're going to, we're going to every day in the military, they say every day is a training day. And, uh, you don't really see that as a young person. You, the, the longer you're in, the more you begin to realize that's the case. It's something to think about as we raise our kids, you know, is every day a training day or do we take days off as we train them? I'm going to tell you right now, it's, it takes a lot of effort to train your kids. It takes a lot of thinking, planning, preparing, and here's the deal. You only get one shot, right? I have girls that are 16 now. I've got two others that are younger, and I realize full and well that my time is very short with the older ones. So, you know, I'm trying to give my best in the short time I have here to teach them some things, but let's keep reading here. It says here that this doctrine document is founded on the concept that unit training is a logical extension of the Army's operations process. Learning and applying the concepts, ideas, and terminology of the operations process as units train makes the transition from training to operations more seamless. Let me just say it again. Learning and applying the concepts as units train makes the transition from training to operations more seamless. In other words, we want it to be uh, realistic. We want it to be uh, performance oriented so that the training mirrors what you're actually going to see in combat, right? And so for our kids, it's good to think about the training that we give them. Really, it should mirror what they're going to see in real life. You know, do we just do we do we just tell them abstract concepts or do we try to actually I'll give you a simple example, right? A simple biblical example is is the the great commandment that we're supposed to love God and love people. Well, I can teach my kids that all day and I can have them memorize that verse all day to love people. But to really train on that, I need to take them places and show them uh people that need loved take them to a homeless shelter. I, I remember taking our kids, um, when we lived in Dayton, Ohio, we did a ministry in, uh, I mean, it was really in a, in a rough part of town that, uh, drugs was a very predominant problem in this area, a very impoverished area. And we would feed people and, and have a church service there. And, you know, I had my kids work the serving line course I had my wife keep them close by her as I went around and visit with people and they stayed behind the counter but they were there to be a smiling face and just to show love to people and to see people in there who who really need help you know it was great for them to actually see and hear and experience and 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 serve firsthand with people that needed love so I could teach them the concepts all day but to actually take them out on the street and show them firsthand what it means, that's that's real training, right? That's real training. So, uh, again, that makes it easier for them to do it in real life. Same thing for the military, right? They want training to be something that you do so much that when it comes time for combat, you can the transition from training to reality or execution is, is seamless. Soldiers achieve the tactical and technical competence that builds confidence, adaptability, and effectiveness. They even say units train all the time. And, and as you train, you build confidence. I think one of the things I've seen in kids so much is just a lack of confidence. So many kids lack that self-esteem, lack that confidence in themselves. And, and parents, we can have a direct effect on our kids in building up their confidence. How we can do that, we can create, whether they know it or not, training scenarios that we put them in. And I'll give you a simple example. My daughter, Emma, is uh, is one that sometimes lacks confidence, and she's a new driver. And so we're teaching her how to listen to the GPS as she drives to follow the directions of where to go once she punches in the, the place she needs to go to. And so when the 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 lady that of the GPS thing says, "Hey, turn right at Highway 361." I, just the other day, we were driving along, and the the GPS said to turn right at this road. And she said, "Do I turn here, Dad? Is this where I turn?" 
Well, I could have just answered yes and and told her, but in my mind, I thought, no, this is a good training scenario. I just kept my mouth shut. And she got nervous and began to say, is this where I turn? Dad, is this it? Is this it? Do I turn here? And then she's like, oh, no, I don't turn there. That's an entrance to a, a gas station. She says, is it up here? Oh, no, that's not the turn. That's a that's a, another you know side road. She said, oh, there's the sign for the, the, the highway. So just letting her work through the process on her own, it helped her build confidence that she can read the signs, figure out where to turn after listening to the GPS. So just taking advantage of little situations like that is so critical to helping our kids learn and understand. It says the Army trains units, soldiers, and Army civilians to achieve proficiency in individual and collective tasks under challenging and realistic conditions. Challenging and realistic conditions. Again, I think as a parent, it'd be great to just think about, for example, you know, under a realistic condition could be when you're starting out and you're early married. I'm just giving you some ideas here to get your brain going as you train your kids. But, you know, when you first start out, when you're married, you have hardly no money at all. So how do you how do you navigate paying for your bills, paying for food, paying for things on a limited budget? Well, maybe what you do is you take your kids out to the store and say, hey, we've got 50 bucks to spend. We need to buy groceries. Here's the things we absolutely need. Help us maximize the groceries we buy with the money we have. And that's just a simple exercise where, or you could give each kid $20 and make a game out of it and see who comes up with the most groceries with their $20. Just to teach them the the, the concept of looking at the numbers and trying to see what the best deal is to, to maximize our income. It goes on here, during the entire training process, leaders provide candid and objective evaluations, assessments, after action reviews, and applied lessons learned. This approach produces versatile units, quality soldiers, and Army civilians ready to conduct operations. Training is the most important activity units do to achieve and maintain readiness. There it is again. So we're, we're hearing there that the, the, that leaders are responsible to provide that feedback. I just want to put men on the spot here. You know, this is a successful man podcast. We need to give feedback to our kids. We need to let them know how they're doing. And let's give positive feedback as well as constructive negative feedback. If they're not hitting the mark or they're making a mistake, we shouldn't come at them and say, you know, call them names because the scriptures are clear, right? We don't provoke our children to wrath. But what we should do is give them constructive feedback to help them adjust make real-time adjustments, and improve in the, in the areas they're working on. As we close out the introduction, I think it's just interesting. Again, I just want to go back to that line. Training is the most important activity units do. Again, this is the United States Army. You know, a, a very old organization, and, and forgive me for not knowing the exact birthday of the Army, Hey, I was Air Force, you know, the Army birthday really didn't matter too much to me. But the point is this this branch of service that's done so well for this country and kept us free has been around for a long time. And their doctrine, they're uh, a key tenet of what they stand on is that training is the most important activity units do. You know, I think about the scriptures that say that the church is an army with banners makes me wonder we could get on a whole different topic right about training within the church well, I think we should even take it into the home because the Bible doesn't really have a ton to say about fathers and children you know it says we shouldn't provoke them to wrath it has a lot to say about correcting them but the the, the little instruction that it gives 
one is one that stands out is to train them up. And I can't think of a more important thing for fathers to do for their children than to train them, and as the Scripture says, in the way they should go. doesn't mean they'll go that way. It's the same way in the military, right? You can train people all you want of the standard that they need to perform a task at. Some, I, I remember I had a commander that he, he, made, he would make the statement. He'd say, you either have the will and have the skill. If you don't have the skill, that's my problem. I'll train you. If you don't have the will, that's also my problem, and we'll fix that too. So kind of a, a shot at people who maybe lack some internal motivation to do what's right. But you know, even in the military, you can have people who don't meet the standard no matter how much training you give them. The case is true with our children, right? We can do our best to train them, give it 110%, teach them the standard they should do things at, and they still maybe just don't get it. But that's okay. The Lord tells us in the Scriptures our jobs to train them. And I just can't help but think if the military says this is the most important activity units do, you know, have we ever thought about that as a father? That activity of training our kids. You know, a lot of times we may think our most important activity is going to work and bringing home money. That is important because you need it to survive. But whether you have little or you have a lot, I think it's important that we train our kids. All right, so we just got through the introduction. You can see that this is going to uh, take some time, and I'm okay spending some time on here. We'll, uh, We'll close out this session and, and continue on next time with uh, with chapter one. I'll just give you a heads up. Chapter one says training to fight and win. I love that. The first point about training is we train to fight and win. So until next time, this is the Successful Man Podcast. Mm-hmm.